So, Greg, uh, I mean, not, I'm not sure if I need to tell you this, but you know, some of your shirts are kind of, kind of crappy. I mean, you know. What do you What do you mean by crappy? They got like a sweet little pocket right here. I uh, mean, that's... they could be better. I mean, there's some. There's a place I know where it has lots of lots of cool stuff. Uh, yeah, but but how cool? We're talking about triple A cool. We're talking about shirts from 86.com. They're a pretty cool site. They sell all types of merchandise, including T-shirts, keychains, and other cool stuff that they sell on their site. Uh, with, and also have awesome video game material as well, such as Street Fighter, Killer Instinct, Guilty Gear, Skullgirls, Blaze Blue, Smite, and 86 own brand of T-shirts as well as, well as other stuff. Um, recently, they put out some new keychain for Street Fighter Five. So yeah, there's some awesome stuff there. So I'm just suggesting, you know. Next time you go out and buy a shirt of any kind, I suggest check out 86.com. And if you want to support us and them at the same time, please use this link in, the, in your web browser to check out 86.com. Put in www.86.com question mark AFF equals 4. Again, www.86.com question mark AFF equals 4. This link will tell them that we sent you and that we're cool with them as long as you're cool with us. Thank you and enjoy the show. Proper intro. Uh, hey guys, hang on a second before we begin our stuff. There we go. Yes. Hey guys, it's been a bit. Um, yeah, we I've been busy. Uh, life's have happened, and but we're back. We're talking about video games, new stuff, all that good stuff. Uh, and with me to talk about all things video game news and E3 coming up is no other than Greg Deets. Hi. I was I was gonna say something clever and then nothing came to mind, so I was like, nah, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> um. So yeah, guys, we've been away for a bit. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, I was up, Jason. <laughs> Bitch games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Um. And uh, yeah, I I think the there's some stuff to talk about, especially with E3, literally about say a week away. Yeah. Yeah, it starts Saturday. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it begins. Um, so speaking of E3, uh, let me – give me a second here as I scroll through this list as far as like E3 topics. Um, the press conference schedule has been updated recently. Uh, this is from IGN.com, but they updated uh, the list of press conferences happening this year at this year's E3. And it starts on Saturday. Um, so, well, yeah, uh, this Saturday. Yes, yeah, so, this Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Uh, oh, that's a pregame show, sorry. Uh, 12, 12 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday is going to be EA uh, press conference. They're doing theirs first. Uh, then on Sunday at 2 p.m. it's going to be Microsoft. And then at 9 p.m. it's going to be Bethesda. Um, will be the, the next ones in line. Um, they listed the PC gaming show, but there's no. Oh, well, it says it says Monday, uh, June 12th at 10 a.m. So we'll. That's actually a weird time, actually. The PC, yeah, a lot of more weird times. Yeah, a PC gaming show in the morning. That's a little. Did weird. Uh, does does Ubisoft have a, a time now? Because the last time I checked, they didn't. Uh, yes, they do have a time. Speaking of which, Ubisoft is also going to be on Monday. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Uh, Monday. Okay. So All it right. seems it seems like they're sticking to their usual schedule when it comes to. The afternoon. I need to write down that list because boy, oh boy, am I gonna forget that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll post a link in the chat into you in a bit. Hang on. Uh, then uh, the next one is gonna be Sony's press conference, which also on Monday, but it's gonna be at 6 p.m. Uh, Digital De uh, Dig uh, Devolver Digital has their own press conference, but it's TVA. Um, they did recently cancel their picnic event, but they're still hosting their own press conference, and they're uh, 
in the, in the uh, developer uh, publisher. So, um, which is cool I, that you know having having this your uh, Devolver Digital host a press conference for the indies that they host is pretty awesome. Um, and then Nintendo is going to host theirs on Tuesday uh, at 9 a.m. Um, and these are all specific times. So yeah, there you go, guys. Those are the updated lists and times for this year's E3 press conferences. And more than likely, you'll hear from us. You'll hear from us talking about it in some sort of capacity. Um, so, and as far as how that goes, we'll we'll let you know for sure. But yeah. Um, it's gonna be fun on the bun. Yep, it's that time again. It's definitely that time again. All right, so let's start things off with something that I'm pretty excited about when I found this out. Give me a second here. As I, uh, oh man, ah, there it is. Okay, so the Mega Man Twitter recently tweeted out something. Um, they tweeted out that uh, they had a GIF. Uh, from uh, the Mega Man X game um, of uh, of X powering up in the uh, in the pod or upgrading, and uh, they're kind of hinting as far as like what's to come at E3. So, what speculation is 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 to come of this is that uh, we might see a Mega Man X collection coming to the 3DS. We had uh, Mega Man X uh, one through six. Um, now, if this... is this is this specifically to the 3DS or because I'd love to have that on the Xbox? Um, I don't know. I'm um, well. So here's the thing: like, there's only so much you can uh, you can guess. But from the history of what was shown um, with Capcom and the Mega Man collection, Mega Man One through Six was, was uh, on a 3DS. The collection, uh, there were some talks regarding a new another Mega Man uh, collection game coming, and. Uh, the image of Mega Man X um, screen, and maybe it's, it may not it may not lead to anything, but uh, the Mega Man Twitter has hinted that uh, there's a Mega Man X game um, coming to either the 3DS or maybe for all consoles or whatnot. What if it was just straight up a new Mega Man X game? Oh my God, that would be insane! Like I, that would uh, blow my mind. Internet would explode. My God, if there was a new Mega Man X game. That would be crazy. Uh, there's been, uh, Jason, there's been actually a lot of chatter about it for a while now because of how successful the Legacy Collection was. Yeah. The Legacy... But there's been no, no no official word. As a matter of fact, fun fun little side note, back when I did uh, the first Mega Manathon for Half Empty, uh, Brian had secretly told me that the guy he was talking to at Capcom, they didn't tell Brian any information. They just said, we're working on something very, very cool that's similar to the Legacy Collection that we think everyone will love. What that turned out to be was the Disney Afternoon Collection. Well, um, since time has very much passed and the game's already out, I can tell that story now. Um, but what's fun is that Brian had been trying to get information out of them about another Mega Man collection. Um, and uh, the guy would neither confirm or deny if they were doing it or not. <laughs> but he get no no information at all. So like even back then it was talked about. So I don't know. It's um sincerely hope it happens. Yeah, definitely. I am super excited if it does happen. I mean, um it's more my guess more than likely it's gonna be a new Mega Man X uh a new Mega Man collection. Um and probably the X series. Um and that'd be pretty sick. I would love to have a Mega Man X collection on GDS. Oh, and I probably bet you more than likely it's going to be in the Switch. I bet you that's more than likely it's going to I, happen. I, well, I mean, I would, I would, the thing I'd hope is that, you know, uh, the Legacy Collection and the Disney Afternoon Collection, um, they were both on everything. That's true. Um, yeah. So mm. I can't imagine that if Capcom owns the rights to. I got to stop laying on my table. Um, if Capcom owns all, the rights to all the Mega Man games, including the X series, that they would limit it to the DS. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, here's the here's the other question: Where are they going to announce it at E3? I think it may be just a video trailer. Like, I don't think it's going to be. They'll just Prescott. release it. Just release it during E3. Yeah, or more than likely, if they are, it's going to be during the Nintendo press conference. Well, there's well. 
there is no Nintendo press conference, but yes, wow. I get you. Yeah, yeah. The, the Nintendo Direct, per se. The... It might be shown off during the PS4 indie, uh, oh no, actually it wouldn't be, because since it's not an indie game, um, <laughs> um, they have a showreel, they might show it then, um, but I, I would, I would assume if they're going to really showcase it, it probably is going to be on Nintendo, because Mega Man, Mega Man and Nintendo, or Capcom and Nintendo has some history in the past together, so. They have history, but they also aren't, they aren't as tight-knit as they once were. Um... Back when the uh, the PlayStation had come out, yeah, like the last Mega Man game on a Nintendo console was X3. Uh, yeah, it was X3. I was trying to remember if it was an actual Mega Man game or an X game, but so it was X3. And um, they tried to make an exclusive Mega Man game, which was the Zero series for the for the GBA. And that was not a big success. Um, now, arguably, neither was Legends, but or even Mega Man X Eight, right, right, um, which was PlayStation Two. But I don't know. Last I heard, Capcom and Nintendo aren't as close knit as they once were. There's not. There's no ill will or like strong uh, disagreement between them. I think it's more on the level of. I don't personally believe that they would have an exclusive Mega Man title for the system at this point. The counter argument I would say is that Capcom is trying to make strides with Nintendo, only because of recently uh, they put out Street Fighter 2, the Ultra Street Fighter 2 New Challenger Edition on Switch. They had let Mega Man and Super Smash Brothers, the Super Smash Brothers 4. Um, they are doing th they are doing things to work for Nintendo when it comes to the Mega Man IP. I think that, I think I think that uh, just based on the history of what was going on recently, I think that uh, if it is indeed true that Mega Man X Collection is going to be for all platforms, I think that they're going to showcase it on the Switch during their their uh, cinema, or not cinema, but um, there are like trailers of, of games coming to the Switch on their uh, direct. You know what could happen, and I was just thinking about this because of what you said. What could happen is that like. The Nintendo, the Nintendo uh, um, Direct is, like, one of the last things during all the stuff during E3. Yeah, yeah. Um, they could, like, show the trailer at the beginning of E3, and then during the Nintendo Direct, like, show a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. It it, it could be just as simple as the Sparks. They just show the trailer by themselves, and then it's, it's going to be showcased on all platforms. Who knows? Um, I, I think I do think though, like if it's gonna be a press conference or a company that they're gonna side with, it'll be it'll be with Nintendo. But that's just I just but I also me. I also doubt that if there's a Mega Man collection, they're going to limit it to just Nintendo. I highly doubt that, just because of the success with the other two things on every other system. We'll see. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, we'll I'm, see. Like, I, 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 I'm I, I get what, I get what you're saying. From... I get what you're saying though. But like, yeah, yeah. I like um, this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, you might be right. Just because Capcom loves to, like, put they out the games money. on everything. So, you they may be right. Money. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, uh, just, I mean, I'm, I'm just using the idea of, like, the success of the last two things, they, the last two collections they put out, and if it's, if it's a collection, then yeah, I can't imagine them limiting it. Yep. Also, to answer your question in the chat, Mirage, uh, didn't we get a Mega Man X collection for PS2 and GameCube? Yes. There's been yes. Mega Man X collections on a lot of things over the but years. But the, the PS2 and, and GameCube are old systems, and they're going to want to put the old games on the new systems. That's more or less the idea behind that. Pretty much. Like, we want... It basically comes down to anything that was old, bring it back to a newer system. That's kind of how it works nowadays when it comes to old games. Well, a lot of people, you know, and like in my situation, I grew up with brothers that didn't give a shit about the systems, and I'll, all I have today is an Xbox One. I don't have my old PS2, I don't have my old GameCube, I don't have my Dreamcast or whatever, so even if I wanted to go back and get that stuff, I would, that'd be awesome, but I can't. It's it's expensive, for, for one, and two, I just don't have the ability to at this moment. Yeah. So, I can't like, I would love 
to be able to just spend 15 bucks, have all the X games or a lot of the X games on my Xbox One and go on with my day. Yeah, it definitely would be pretty awesome. Um, moving on to our next story, uh, this concerns about Ubisoft. And Ubisoft put out, a, it's actually a pretty cute trailer, but Ubisoft put out a, um, oh, hang on. Eh, it again? There it goes, okay. Uh, Ubisoft put out a uh, video trailer, just kind of, uh, it's like, hey, here are the games going to be at this year's E3, and, but at the same time, they're like, well, there are some awesome games we're going to show, we don't want to show everything, we're going to, you know, hold back on some games. So what they end up doing is they'll show the, in the trailer, like, they show games that are coming to the E3 press conference, but then they have, like, some, obviously, that, like, contains footage that will be unveiled at the, uh, press conference. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, some of the games they're showing off are, um, South Park. Uh, as well as the new uh, Far Cry 5 game, um, which looks pretty cool. Um, I think that's it, actually. Hang on, I'm just kind of looking through the trailer myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, it basically just kind of their way of just like, hey, here's some games coming. Here, here's a, a kind of a sneak peek of what was to come for the Ubisoft press conference. Um, so yeah, I think it was pretty cute, but like, it's basically just them like saying like, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. we got some new stuff coming. Um, this is this has been the third, fourth year in a row that Ubisoft's going to showcase South Park again. Because I know that game's been like in development hell, um, coming out. Yeah, yeah, it, less development hell than other things. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, and that's only because they apparently, from from what I've read, they found a giant glitch in uh, the fractured butthole that like game breaking glitch that they couldn't oh, figure wow. out like they couldn't just solve like that they had to like reroute a bunch of shit it was really bad wow. so um yeah they went in and uh they went in and fixed that apparently <laughs> <laughs> so wow. that was the whole thing but yeah like i have a poster on my wall i don't really want to turn my whole laptop and show you but um it's a double-sided poster so one is like long way and the other one's vertical but uh what's fun Here's the fun thing, and I'm, you might talk about this. It actually officially on the poster has the old Ubisoft logo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, Ubisoft changed the logo, um, which seems to be more some like even out or more cir- circular. Um, I like the fact that somebody pointed out like it, if you turn it upside down or it's supposed to like represent poop. Uh, yeah, if you turn it side. Yeah, if you turn it sideways, it it, it, it like it basically looks like poop from the top, but. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's also a stretch. Is like it's it's like I get I get what they're saying, but it's still a stretch. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. No, I'm very excited to see what Ubisoft has. I mean, I think we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but I want to know how much involvement they have with the uh, thing that I didn't think was going to happen and totally is happening, and that's the oh, uh, right, yeah, Mario Rabbit. Wow, game. that was that that that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> that is that is that is a game that you and I like were kind of questioning if that was real or not. Apparently it was. They gave Mario a gun. What? <laughs> to make him a Buster gun too on top of that. So I am weird. so confused. So weird. I am so confused. But whatever. I was like, I was like, no, that that's not a thing. Like, there's there's no way that could be a thing. And then it was a thing, and I was like, boy, sometimes I'm wrong, and when I'm wrong, I'm really wrong. Man, this, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely talk more about it in the Nintendo segment, but yeah, um, but we'll definitely see more stuff at E3 as E3 is literally yeah, it's just like, but, but a thing like, like but a thing like that, like honestly, how much involvement does Ubisoft have to that a game like that? How much involvement does Nintendo have to a game like that? I have to imagine that the, all the development was in Ubisoft. Like it has to be. I think because Nintendo so. outsources all the time at this point now anyway. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's in a world where we have rabbits and Mario crossing over. Um, I can't. I mean, it basically anything is on the table. Half Life Three, please happen. <laughs> if yeah. Mario, if Mario can cross over rabbits, I have some hope, kind of. <laughs> um, there, there you go, guys. Your annual, hopefully, Half Life Three ends up being a thing, but we'll see. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Uh... Uh, on that note, like I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Ubisoft's uh, conference because Ubisoft to me has become that company that has a, a, a surprise every year. Um, I will say this much: please stop having comedians host your damn conferences. 
they they announced recently that uh, Aisha Tyler's not gonna not gonna come back for this one. Thank God. Like I love Aisha Tyler, but she was such a bad fit for that like thing. Hey, let's make let's take a meme on stage. Let's go ask the, let's go ask the cosplayer yeah. like, who's excited. I'm I'm like here because I'm paid to be here. Yeah, like her stand up uh, in other situations is hilarious, but yeah. that was it's so bad and it's been bad yeah. every year. Yeah, it's... like Joel McHale was the closest to like somewhat entertaining, and he was still awful. At least it's better than Mr. Caffeine. I'll say that much. That's arguable, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know what Mr. Caffeine is, just look it up on YouTube. Trust me. It's it's a thing. It it is it is. Uh, <laughs> Moving on to our next story, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite characters may have been leaked, um, and I actually have some first-hand knowledge about this, actually. Um, but I'm going to first start off with a post on NeoGAF. Uh, this post was uh, it was uh, posted as far as like what characters has been leaked, and this is a person who has posted leaks before regarding um, characters within the Capcom. And it's the list he said it's going to be in the game for Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Um, Arthur, Chris, oh, bro, Chris from, uh, let me go back. Arthur from, um, uh, what was that game called? Uh, the, you know, I, I forgot the name of the game, man. I'm totally, I'm totally dumb right now. Um, I'll just continue on. Uh, Chris from, Chris Redfield from Resident Evil. Chun Li from Street Fighter. Dante from Devil May Cry. Firebrand from the same game I totally forgot about. about. Uh, oh, uh, ghouls and ghosts. Ghouls and ghouls. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't hear the character you said. I was kind of reading something on my phone while you were saying the story. Right. And I was like, I don't know what game you said. Know, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, Monster Hunter, Morgan from Darkstalkers, Nemesis from uh, Resident Evil, Ryu from Street Fighter, Spencer from Bana Commando, Shredder Ryu from Shredder, uh, X from Mega Man X. Uh, and Jade, I think. Oh yeah, he's from uh, Jade, the home, the home of it from Darkstalkers as well. Uh, on the Marvel side, Ant Man, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Gamora, Hawkeye, Hulk, Iron Man, Nova, Rocket Groot. The, the, the they're gonna have it to where both it's one character, but there's two characters at the same time, which is pretty sick. Um, Spider Man, yeah. Uh, Thanos, <laughs> Thor, and Ultron. Now, the reason I have some insider information about this actually is when I was at Fanime this past week and I ran into an, an old friend of mine, which I will not name for obvious reasons, um, I ran into him and he had some inside knowledge regarding uh, Nemesis having a, like he told me this prior to this, le uh, this list being leaked, told me that Nemesis is going to be in the game. Told me he has a full screen command grab, which is crazy to think about. Um, so I am I will not be surprised if this is the actual the final list of the game. Um, from from my comp, from my uh, hearsay of people talking about Marvel Capcom Infinite, um, people are not really excited about this lineup, um, just because it's, it's a lot of the same characters from Marvel Three, um, with, with a few with different additions. Uh, so, yeah, I was gonna say like it, I, I like, like I hope it's not the final list and there's a lot more like obscure characters. Like Capcom, it's hard to kind of pull from Capcom's well of characters to make reasonable fighting game characters. Um, I think, because I mean they try to do that with with three with like you know, um, uh, Phoenix right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it didn't. It, I mean, it worked, but it was kind of dumb. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, Marvel has a huge well to pull from. Most most of these most of the characters are from the cinematic universe, uh, which makes sense. That makes yeah, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, trying to sell this game. Yeah. I, I had heard a rumor that this game was free to play. Um, that I remember hearing about that long ago, but I don't think it is. It okay. may be. It might be. I don't know. Um, I'll tell you what. Right now, like, they need to do something with this game that I don't know if other fighting games do it. I've seen. I've seen pretty much every fighting game do this at this point, but no hidden characters. 
like everything should be given to you. If you have to pay sixty bucks, everything should be given to you right off the gate. Yeah, uh, recently, like maybe co- maybe like, costumes, but that's about it. Yeah, recently more fighting games have been more um, accessible, more willing to just have everything unlocked when you buy the game. Um, this has been a thing for the past couple years, I want to say. Um, so I could definitely see that happening. I don't think they'll have no hidden characters that you have to find, unlock, or pay to get, unless it's DLC, which is. The only DLC characters they need to announce for Capcom vs. Infinite is, um, or Capcom vs. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, uh, is uh, Sigma, Mega Man's uh, boss. Um, but you know, I think that if that might be a, a, a something to come into fruition, more DLC characters down the road, we'll see. Um, but yeah, the list just doesn't really stand out to me, honestly. It's like, also kind of it's also kind of small. Yeah. Well, it's 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 average. It's sizable. I mean, there's room for to grow, but um, like, small and compared to think like other Marvel Capcom games. Like how many how many characters on each side? Ten so far. Uh, let's let's see. One, two, three, 12? four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, so thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, three, four, five, six, twenty-seven, twenty, twenty, twenty-eight characters actually. That's that pretty. That's pretty sizable. That's pretty sizable. So how many? How many were in three? Like, if I go buy Marvel's Capcom three Ultimate right now, like, how many characters do I get? I think there's more than that. I want to say fifty, maybe. I'm not quite sure. It's been a while. Um, but I know there's more than twenty-eight. Or it might be the same actually. Hmm. Twenty-eight is still pretty sizable for an entire cast, but. Yeah. You're definitely going to want to increase that number to pull in people who are big fans of the franchise. Yeah, I, I want to see some more, like, just other Capcom characters than the ones we saw already in Marvel 3. Um, there's some speculation that, uh, what was it, the main character the, from Power Stone was going to be in it. The uh, the one that can shoot rockets out of his arms. Um, Power Stone. Was yeah, that a Capcom game? That is a Capcom game. Power Stone. Um, I learn something every day. Because <laughs> um, Capcom has, a, has a, a vast library of characters that can go into and you know definitely put into the game. Um, I know that when I was at when I was at Hutch's house uh, for Magfest, um, he had a book on the shelf that was like a catalog of every of almost every single Capcom character, and I was like, I didn't know half these characters existed. Oh yeah, definitely. Capcom has a rich heritage when it comes to the games, you know, very obscure. Or not existed, but I didn't know they were Capcom. Yeah, I should sure. say that. For sure. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of Hutch, what's up, Hutch? Um, <laughs> for those who are watching or listening in the podcast, he's in the chat right now, observing our every move. Um, but yeah, like, uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll find out more information. Obviously, E3 is going to be the answer for most of these things we're talking about tonight. But, um, you know, if this is truly the list, you know, then I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that it's not... Uh, as different as in Marvel 3. Um, the, the Marvel side, I, I understand because Cinematic Universe, you want to promote the, the movies, so you're, you're obviously going to have the, the, the characters from you know the movies coming up or the movies that are in right now in the game. But on Capcom's uh, side, I would like to see more diversity. Um, we got some cool, some cool new characters or cool returning characters, but like I'd rather have like some like obscure character from like from you know Rival Schools or Power Stone or. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be rad. Yeah. yeah, sure. But we'll see. We shall see. Uh, moving on to our next story of the day. Ah, yes. So, PlayStation 3 ends production in Japan. Give me a second here. So I... Boop. All right. So, um, this was... Oh, hang on. There we go. Okay. Okay, so this was reported uh, by uh, Gamasu. Uh, and this is by Sal Ramona. Um, PlayStation 3 production uh, ended in Japan. Also, why is it not doing the thing? Whoa, it is wigging out. Yes, it is. Uh, okay, we're good now. Okay, we're good. <laughs> OBS Studios, give me the finger right now. Um, so, PlayStation 3 production has ended in Japan. The official PlayStation uh, Japanese PlayStation website revealed. Uh, the page for the, uh, the page for the 500 gigabyte standard model, the only remaining PlayStation 3 model in production in Japan, lists shipments, shipments as ended. PlayStation 3 first launch in November of 2006. Um, it's it's an end of an era. It really is. Like yeah, PS3, 
PS3 to okay, so when it launched, obviously there was huge, huge backlash regarding um regarding just the price uh when it came out because it was like six hundred dollars uh on top of controllers on top of, of a game or two you want to buy so it was pretty spendy to get a ps3 and it started off on the wrong foot and actually that this was when microsoft kind of took hold of this generation with the xbox 360 cheaper price much bigger library um, i i wouldn't say it started off on the wrong foot not from my experience I'll, here, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what my experience was with it, because it's actually somewhat interesting. Okay. Um, so I was working at Walmart when it came out, and um, we uh, there, was a, there was a story that had happened not too long ago where um, it, it got a huge thing about uh, how Iraq was using, like, a shit ton of them to um, use as a supercomputer. Like linking them together somehow like that. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> and and I remember seeing that, and then shortly after that, like shipments were getting stolen at um like this GameStop from down the street from us. There was a truck that was shipping them had gotten robbed. Um, uh, and it was a whole bunch of stuff. So the day that it had launched, or the night that it had launched, we had a huge line going outside, and we had a ton of them. And um, I remember very much that we had three registers, so that way people could buy them. And it was in the um, the uh, customer service center specifically. And then uh, we also had a bunch of um, male associates walking people to their car. Yeah. But we always had two people per per PlayStation Three um, because we were just it was just such a like apparently such a hot commodity. Oh yeah, um, it was crazy. Yeah. When that game, yeah, when that console came out, like, the, even though the price the price was pretty high, like people were still out in droves and in lines waiting for that console to to come out to buy. Um, I don't remember it being six hundred dollars though. That's my only thing. Like, I rem I remember five hundred, but then again, I I it's so long ago that I could be absolutely wrong on that. Yeah, it was it was a pretty pricey system nonetheless. Um, but since then, like the PS3 turned out, I I would I mean, like between. That between the three consoles, I think the PS3 might have the best library out of all of them. I think. I know it's arguable. It's arguable because they, they have some really good games on there, exclusive wise. Uh, you know, God of War, the Uncharted series. Um, you know, I guess you can, yeah, Last of Us was on there. Um, you know. The, yeah, I um I. Uh, Metal Gear I don't. Solid 4. I, <laughs> I sometimes well, I sometimes don't understand how like because I, Sony. <laughs> Sony was actually struggling to get PS3s off the shelf. Yeah. Um, at first, it launched. Its launch was really successful, but then placed or then then uh, Nintendo was like, "Yeah, we got motion controls," and everyone was like, well, "We gotta have one of those." That's and true. I, yeah. I remember <laughs> right. not being able. Yeah, I remember not being able to keep the Wii's on the shelf. Like we had one. If we had one, it was gone within the hour. And. Um, but we always had PS3s. We always had 360s. Then again, 360 came out a year before, so whatever. Yeah, that is um, your start, head start. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and then I remember like, oh, well, you know, I, there's a lot of the same games are on the Xbox and on the PlayStation, and the PlayStation was like 100 bucks more. So people were just like, yeah, I'm going to get an Xbox 360. And, um, and then I remember Blu-ray and HD DVD were having a battle. And, oh uh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. And that yeah. <laughs> that severely helped the PlayStation sell, um, yeah. but it still wasn't enough because I remember hearing every single month that that Xbox had outsold PlayStation every single month yeah. for years, and uh, and no matter what exclusive PlayStation got, it still didn't it didn't like help, it didn't matter, and uh, um, uh. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting to me that that they're stopping production now. It, 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 yeah, it is because the the thing about it is like, it's been going on for so long. Like, if they were still making PS3s up until you know last week, uh, that is a very long, long lifespan of a console. That came out in 2006. Um, that didn't. That means it has been out for 11 years uh, and continued to be in production. So, I remember when they stopped production on the PS2, we were just kind of like, yeah, 10 years. That seems about right. 
that like it was it was like 10 or 11 years or something like that I was like it was a really good system at all these great games it was a top selling system it makes perfect sense they'd have it for that many years and then the playstation 3 is like the same amount of years it's like why um i guess there was a demand for it or enough demand to keep it selling if that's the yeah, case i guess yeah i yeah I if that's the, my shoulders you know if that's the case then we'll probably see ps4 for another 10 uh, some odd years then um until the ps5 so. Well, they did. Uh, they did announce. I remember them saying that the PS4 was a 10-year system. So I don't know. Yeah, not to mention the fact that we're getting the PS4 Pro as well. So like it's and, and the PS4 Slim. So we'll definitely have like some you know revisions of the PS4 at you know in in this generation. But um, you know, I, I, I it's pretty cool. Like I, I think it's pretty cool that Sony's been um been supporting their their consoles even long before. Or even long into like another console generation, so good, good, good stuff to Sony. But um, yeah, it's an end of an era, end of an era. So no longer will you be able to get a PS3 unless well you can buy them today, but like um, no new ones, new ones will be officially be made. So, but yeah, all right. So we are now gonna go into. Hang on, I'm gonna set this up. It is time, guys, for your Overwatch minute. <gasps> Give me a second here as I set this up. Let me, uh... I didn't grab my hand. I don't feel like getting up and getting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a second here as I turn up the volume. All right, there we go. So here is Greg Dietz with your Overwatch Minute for the week of the 4th of June. <laughs> so we've been, uh, we've been uh, off... Uh, Anthony's been off doing other things and not recording the podcast, so the Overwatch Minute is behind. So I will kind of briefly catch you up. There's been a few nerfs and buffs that are currently on the PTR. Um, uh, the biggest one, like the biggest two, like a slight buff or slight change to McCree's ultimate, like it just kind of locks on a little bit quicker. Um, but uh, Reaper now doesn't get orbs when he kills something. He just gets 20% of the damage he does back as health. So like every shot essentially gives him health. Um but it's not a whole lot. It's like, it's again, 20% of the damage he dealt. So if he did 10 damage, he gets two health. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Roadhog's like, Roadhog's kit has been slightly adjusted to the point where um, he no longer does, he does a third less damage than he would before. So hooking characters no longer does, is um, a death sentence to almost every single character. Um, what the hook was designed to do, always designed to do, was hook someone in, do a heavy amount of damage, not necessarily kill, but also pull them out of position. So that way, somebody else could, like, your, your team could then, you know, kind of lock onto them, and that's exactly what they've done. Uh, but the Roadhog community is like, all those Roadhog mains, I use the quotation of mains, because if you're maining, you're playing it wrong. Um... <laughs> Uh, they're all angry about it because it it completely changes their character. But I say, trust trust the developers. They know what they're doing. And even if they don't and they mess something up, like let's say that one Bastion buff, <laughs> um, they will adjust to make it better. And now Bastion is no longer the just disgusting thing that kills everything. Um, now he's like, now he's back to like being picked as often as he was previously. I don't know the whole thing. Anyway, uh, during our time off, Overwatch had its year anniversary. And for its year anniversary, it basically did another event. The event is different than the other events where it does not have a specific game type attached to it. You know, the summer ones had Lucio Ball. The, uh, the, the Halloween one had Junkenstein's Revenge. Uh, the winter one had May Snowball. Um, the... Uh, um, Chinese New Year one had uh, Capture the Flag, which stayed around. And then the Uprising event had um, that cool, like, story mode sort of thing. So uh, this one has no game type attached to it, which is really interesting to me. Um, but it does have a crap ton of skins and emotes. Everybody has... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody has a dance emote. 
everybody has a different dance emote. And it's a lot of fun, too. My favorite one at this moment is Zarya, because it's essentially the Crystal Light, like, aerobics dance. <laughs> um, yes. It's yes, so yes. it's so funny. Um, I was lucky enough, since I play Lucio probably 60% of the time, um, I was I was lucky enough to get his skin and dance in the loot box. Nice. Um, nice. But I'd love to get I'd love to get May's Beekeeper and Diva's Cruiser, which Diva's Cruiser is probably one of the cooler skins. Um, but there's a like there's a bunch of skins. Every single skin is a legendary skin, so it's three thousand gold. Um, I do personally feel that during an event, those legendary skins should be a little bit more easy easily attainable, um, especially for something like this, uh, just because it's such a short period in which we can get it. Um, which brings me to my next, next topic or the, the thing I wanted to kind of bring up to you, Anthony. All right. Lay it so, on. so all of these skins cost 3000 in game gold. Okay. All of the dances cost 700, 750 gold. Mm -hmm. Um, the sprays, everybody has a really cool spray that looks like a card, like you'd get in a deck of cards, a 52 deck. Uh, which I don't know why over like but the Blizzard's not actually selling that deck of cards, but whatever. Um, and then uh, there's no highlight intros and there's no uh, victory poses. So okay. Um, but according to what I've been reading, everyone added up how much everything costs in game currency, and it's like fifty three thousand gold. The only way to obtain gold is by getting duplicates in loot boxes or just straight getting gold in a loot box. And the highest amount of gold you can get in a loot box is by having a chest break in a in a gold or a yellow um, disc, uh -huh. and that's 500. Uh -huh. And it's super rare to get that. Super, super rare to get that. Uh -huh. So somebody did the math, and it's like you have to spend about 100 bucks in order to get every single item. In, in the event or um, play the game for about eight to 10 hours every single day during the event. Now people are upset about this. People are up in arms because they feel that Bungie is uh, not Bungie. Wow. That Blizzard, <laughs> I don't know why I said Bungie. I was way off <laughs> that. Uh, speaking of that, Destiny 2 looks dope. Um, uh, that Blizzard is, essentially price gating their, their 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 fan base saying that um they're forcing their players to spend money in order to get these skins and a lot of people have like started a boycott against the game during the event refusing to play refusing to spend any more money on overwatch um my opinion on this and i want your opinion on this too anthony but my opinion is that's nonsense they're cosmetic items they're not. They don't make or break the game. They're fun. They're added things. They, the core, the core element of the game is still there. There's nothing different. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed are the, um, the three added maps. Uh, which. Those are cool, I guess. Um, we're also getting another moon map here soon. Um, which is currently on the PTR. But, for me. I think getting mad that Blizzard basically is making money off of skins, off of cosmetic items, emotes, sprays, yada, 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 is what's making the other content free. And people getting pissed off about that makes about as much sense as so, you know, like trying to punch yourself in the nuts. Like, it, it doesn't, it, it, well, basically it doesn't make any sense to me. Why? Why get mad about that? Why make that a big a big issue? Okay, uh, so my response is that uh, one, I think you're 100 percent correct, Greg. I think that cosmetic items, ow, cosmetic items, um, in a game, if it does not affect the gameplay in any in any shape or form, and you know it's simply there to be look cool or, or to have, then you know you're completely right. You know people should not be upset about this. What I will say though. Is that um, if I want a particular skin or a particular mode or dance, the only way for me to get it is to either you know play the game and then earn it 
through, through its random or its, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, there's a term for it, um, man, I, I forgot the term, basically kind of like a random chance of able to get it, um, every time I, I, I put gold or actual money into it, um, so in an ingenious, ingenious way, Blizzard's making me want to play the game or pay more so I can get that very thing, um, and I can't, Absolutely. and I can't, Absolutely. and I can't exactly, if, if Blizzard was, if Blizzard listed the item or the dance like on it on the Blizzard in the in the game where you can directly buy it, you know I think that people would be okay with it. And people would be like, all right, this is awesome, this is cool, I can get it right here, rather than try, take a chance every time. But that kind of the first pe- that kind of defeats the purpose of the whole loot thing. Well, it and, also defeats the purpose of like their motto of cosmetic items should feel special. Exactly. Um, yeah. Like after after the event's over and you see somebody wearing that, you know, the Jazzy Lucio or the Cruiser Diva, and you don't have that, it's like, man, that's really cool. I hope they bring that back. And there's actually rumor that like the skins from previous events will be coming back in. Um, like there's going to be a summer event, and all the summer loot box stuff is going to come back with Lucio Ball, but also new skins. Um, and that the old the old skins are actually going to be in golden loot boxes now or something like that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, but I still this goes back this goes back to like my arguments about everybody complaining about cosmetic items. This goes back to evolve and and uh, what's his face that you like a lot? Um, the British dude that uh, oh I can't oh yeah 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 yeah. Um... I forgot his name already. <laughs> um, I mean, that's that's fine because I I don't care about him either. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, like he he kind of he kind of ushered in this like whole attitude of cosmetic items are bad and um, or deal like quote unquote DLC is bad and it it it, it drives me nuts that people think it's okay to get mad about something that they don't understand. You know, something that, like, uh, a few developers have, have kind of said publicly, and, um, I mean, we even talked about this on a podcast a while ago, that um, Cliff Lezinski talks about how it, the, the AAA game market is not sustainable. Um, that it just doesn't make enough money to, to kind of come out on top. Yet, a game like these, these multiplayer games that have in-game items that make people want to spend money within the game keep the, not only the game alive but the studio alive and it's it's the best way to keep making that money and um i think i think when when people out there complain about how a development company is just trying to make a buck off them or or whatever i'm like you don't get it you don't understand that like do you honestly believe that all of these animators and developers and coders and whatnot are don't don't deserve to be paid? Like, is that your whole attitude? Is that what you honestly believe? Because you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And and it, it irritates me to no end that people would sit there and be like, well, I'm not spending any money on it because I can't get the skin I want. It's like, you're a child. You're an adult child. You're a man child. With with a comp with a um um. Oh, what's that term? The, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, I'm drawing a complete blank. The, um, not privileged. It's when you, when you think you deserve something regardless. Right, right, right. I, yeah, I, I know what exactly. What word am I looking for? <laughs> I, I, I know what you're talking about. I, I definitely do. Um, uh, I, I don't want to say it's elit- elitism, but it's, um. No, there's there's an no. on, there's a word I'm just completely yeah. drawn a blank on, but it's basically that idea that I I have dumped so many hours into your game. I played I played your game for 600, 700, 800 to 1000 plus hours. Entitled. Entitled. There we go. Entitled. Yes. Entitled. Thank you. <laughs> um yeah, it's that entitled attitude and and I I can't I can't get behind that. I can't stand that. It's not your game. It's it's Blizzard's game. It's your community, but it's not your game. And yeah, you yeah. don't get to dictate what Blizzard does with their game. So, anywho. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm glad we see eye to eye on that because, <laughs> oh boy, that was that. Like I listened to the Funhouse podcast and they were talking about it and they're on the same boat as us. Mm-hmm. And like there were the comments were just like, no, it's unfair, yada yada yada. Yeah. And I'm like, you're you're not helping your case. Yeah. You you keep arguing that you deserve these skins. And, like, the only argument that I could give, the only argument that I could give to the whole loot box situation right now is that maybe, just maybe during the event, loot boxes, gar- like, garner maybe double the gold that they normally would. So that maybe they're a little bit easier obtainable. Yeah. But, like, that's the only adjustment that I would be okay with. Everything else is just, like, no, I don't think that you should get gold in every single loot box. No, I don't believe that if you get a duplicate, it should it should give you the gold for how much it costs to buy. No. The whole idea of skins is that they're supposed to feel special. They're supposed to feel unique. When I started playing the game back in the day, and I really wanted that Biva skin, and my buddy got it before me, every single time I played with him and he was Biva, I was like, man, I really want that skin. Every time. And then I finally got it, and it felt good. Well, yeah. now my I, I have I have um, uh, Frankenhog or whatever you want to call him, and my buddy doesn't. So when I play as Frankenhog, he's like, "Oh man, that's a really cool skin." Like, it's supposed to feel neat. It's supposed to feel fun and cool. And uh, I, uh, moving on. <laughs> Yes, we can spend more than an hour or two on this topic, but yeah, like yeah, I agree. I just I just needed to get that off my chest because it was <laughs> maddening me. To to end to end on this on this conversation, like what I will say to add to the point, um, just look recently in regards to um, uh, I O the guys who made Hitman series, um, they were let go of Square Enix um after their first year of their single player content um. Which was really great. It, was, it got multiple Game of the Year awards from multiple websites. Yet they were let go because Square Enix, um, you know, they, they didn't see uh, much profit or, or at least what comes to their standards, much profit in that game. And because of its single player, there isn't much to really sustain that 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 game to for people to keep playing or to um, people to you know at, you know cosmetic items that might have helped it out maybe in the long run, but. Things like things like cosmetic items does help a company in the long run, um, if it's popular enough. That is, if it's if it's yeah. a game where people are not really playing as much, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it, it definitely helps out, and it's definitely. Well, it, it 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 comes down to the idea that like other other game developers have talked about how it was really difficult to um, keep the community together when they would come out with like a map pack because suddenly. The players with the map pack were playing together, but the players who weren't were playing together, and you just you had you had two different groups of people playing the game. And um, developers don't want to split up the community, so they'd rather have them play together, and this is the best way. Like make money, make money on bullshit, and then have the players stay together. Yep, yep. Um, you know what's funny? I totally forgot. There's one other topic we need to just discuss about. I totally forgot about it until now. Um, real quickly. Nintendo announces their online details regarding uh, their online service. Uh, and let me actually bring it up real quick. Uh, where is my thing, my bobber? Uh, there it is. Okay. All right. So I can see on the screen, this is from their website. Uh, Nintendo Online Switch uh, was announced for 2018. It's going to come out uh, 2018. Um, it's going to be f- so right now, people will be able to have it for free until 2018. Um, you'll be able to play uh, compatible co-op and competitive online uh, online by signing in, in with your Nintendo account. Online play will be free for Nintendo account holders uh, until uh, our paid serv- uh, online service launches in 2018. Um, our online lobby and voice chat is going to be available. Uh, I think this is a big one right here. Game uh, Classic game selection. Subscribers will, will get to download a compilation of classic titles with an added online play, such as Super Mario Bros. 3, Balloon Fight, and Dr. Mario, um, as well as the prices. You can do one month for four bucks, two, uh, three months for eight bucks, and twelve months for a year, uh, twenty bucks. Um, and they even listed like what's available with the you know service and what is not. Um, so, I think the question was answered for me as far as is there going to be eShop? There will be um, for the. I mean, it's not a virtual console per se, but it's basically. Uh, games that Nintendo is going to be giving to you uh, with a description of classic games. Um, 
I guess that's, that's, the, that's one aspect of it. I mean, I believe that the other aspect will be like, if you want to keep it so you can play it when it's not available for that month, go ahead and buy it. Um, actually, no. If you, if you actually the game that you download from uh, from the subscription, you get to keep, you get to download and keep. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it. Okay, I had read that it was only playable for that month. Uh, no, it's not, it's only available as long as you're a, a subscriber. Okay, cool. So, which makes perfect sense. It's the same yeah. thing as a uh, PSN Plus. So. Um. Or under, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I know that's. It sounds like it sounds like the. Game for Gold situation as well. Um, it's also twenty bucks. If you're bitching about if you're bitching about twenty bucks, like I got I got I got a bridge to sell you. Like <laughs> that's amazing. It is. It is. It is a, a great great deal. So you have no you have no right to complain about it at all. <laughs> but we if, did. You and I did have a conversation briefly on Twitter about the uh, Splatoon headset. Oh yeah. Um, because it was, it was pretty much announced the same day. Uh, and, um, other people, other people were like on Twitter, like, I'm not going to spend $20 to talk on an app. And I'm like, you're not spending $20 to talk on an app. I just want you to understand that you, that's not, that's not what you're doing here. You're doing other things. Uh, but that's certainly not one of them. It's a weird configuration to have a voice chat if you want to do it though because like you have to connect the device the splatoon squid device to your nintendo switch and then into your phone and then into the headset as as i pointed out there are other devices that do the exact same thing right right is it cumbersome sure i'm not arguing that but that's also it looks like it's also for the um uh mobile like the person on the go, like playing Splatoon in the park, I guess, or on on a plane. It's why so would you? It's so weird. Like, why would you? And on top of that, even if you did, you had to be in a Wi-Fi area. Yeah. So so, so it just seems to me it's like a, it's a weird like. It definitely it's it's for the mobile user, so that way they can have the headset and play the game at the same time and hear all the audio. And in my mind, I go. Most people playing that game are probably gonna have it docked and playing with like a pro controller. Yeah. Or well, no, actually, I'll take that back. Probably with the Switch controller, just because like. Um, either way, either yeah. way, they're not they're not gonna have it. They're not gonna be holding it handheld like it's a DS. I just don't see that happening. Um, or if they are and they're in their own home, like they'll probably have the audio coming through the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I I I think Nintendo kind of put this on purpose. So that it makes you uh, it makes you play the game as it should be, <laughs> like without no voice chat. And if you are like, we're gonna make we're gonna make it as as cumbersome as possible. Um, it's just very weird to see that. I mean, Nintendo again, as we will have our predictions real quick. Like it's it's a very interesting concept, and I get what they're trying to do. It's just kind of a weird way of doing it. Um, but at the same time, like if you want to play Splatoon multiplayer at home like with the internet there are multiple other sources you can use I mean given like in my in my pine of sky I wish it was built into the console but that's not the way it is for Nintendo <laughs> so no it's it's yeah I think it, and I think that's that's primarily because of the same reason that Splatoon 1 didn't have voice communication was because Nintendo really didn't want Nintendo's always a toy. Like, we talked about this before. Nintendo's a toy company. And as a toy company, they definitely don't want kids playing Splatoon and hearing just the worst things that you hear on Xbox and PlayStation. Well, uh, that's going to happen when the voice chat comes in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because uh, the way the voice chat thing works is you ha you can only chat with friends through the app. Oh. You can't just chat with, like, rando teammates. Sure, you can oh. send, in you can send friend requests to, to, to talk to them, but... You're not. You're absolutely not having voice communication with randos. Mm, I see. I see. Okay. Well. All right. But yeah. <laughs> no, like, cause like I, I saw that man. My first gut reaction was just like, man, what are they thinking? But then I saw a response. It's like, no, you're completely right. They don't. Like, Splatoon One didn't have voice chat, and it didn't need it. And it's Splatoon Two, I'm pretty sure the same thing. So, you know, you're. You're you're right on that aspect. So I think Splatoon Two we just fine without voice chat. Yeah, like like I'm not arguing that the that the device looks cumbersome. I'm not. Yeah. Like that, it totally does. I just think that it's not a problem. It's it's a non-issue in my book. Um, 
the game is awesome and that's what you're going to be playing. Like, if, if Splatoon is the type of game where you need to communicate that strongly with your teammates, like, then find three other teammates to play with on a regular basis and then friend them and then talk to them, like, through Discord or something like that if it's that much of an issue. Right, right, but, definitely. But I just don't see it being that because that game is designed to be, like, well, I'm just going to paint the ground as much as I can and, uh, you know, like, my teammates are just going to be my teammates and do their own thing. Like, it just... I don't know, Anthony. I think I think the internet just kind of blows things out of proportion. That's kind of the way it is, right? I mean, that's kind of the way it is. I mean, if we're talking about the internet in general, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on to our last thing of our podcast, last topic: Nintendo E3 press conference predictions. Um, so. We talked about Microsoft and Sony in the previous podcast, but we did not touch on Nintendo. Uh, as far as like what they're going to be showing off um, in their direct, more than likely, we'll see uh, Mario. Uh, we'll Odyssey, you mean? Or yeah, Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll see Mario Odyssey. Um, because I'm pretty sure we're going to see this one with um the uh, Rayman raving red the rabbit. Oh, there we go. Yes. Like, the, the Rabbit's Mario crossover game that's happening that I, I still don't understand why that's a thing, but it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's it's like the Minions getting their own movie. You know what's weird about that is that Rabbits were before Minions. They were pre-Minions. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think they were the reason why Minions exist. I like <laughs> I liked the Rabbits when they were a part of a Rayman game. Right. Yeah. I thought they were fun and clever and cute, and and then they just got annoying. And I was like, oh boy, these things can f right off. So I'm gonna bring up real quickly what was announced in 2016 for the Nintendo last year. I believe, like, let me see, let me go through the wiki real quick. Um, they do a direct every three months, I think. Mm-hmm. That's true. They do. They do. They've been kind of better about that. I correct me if I'm wrong, but like, was it like literally one game they showed off last year's E3 was just Zelda? <laughs> yeah, because that's all they that's all they really had. I think this year will be a bit different. I think they're going to they're going to talk about at this at this particular direct. I mean, like they did they kind of did the same thing last year. They're going to talk about mostly what's going to come out in the next three months and and um, a little bit about what's coming out in the next six months. They're definitely not going to be like. Hey, so we got Dish coming out in a year or so. Like they don't, they're not the company to do that because they've had that backfire on them real hard in the past, and they'd rather pull a um, a Bethesda and tell us about a game that's coming out this year. Um, so I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot of like for quarter two of 2000, 2018, I don't think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see. You know, so next month we're getting this for the DS, and then, like, they're going to talk about Pikmin, the Pikmin game for the DS. They're going to talk about Odyssey. Okay. They're going to talk about um, Splatoon 2. They're going to talk about ARMS. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're going to talk about some new games that, that are coming to the DS, ex- or the, the Switch exclusively. I think oh, they're going to talk about the Switch. You, you know, it's, you know. speaking of which, they're going to talk about that new... Uh... Was it 2D XL? That that new. Um... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll They're gonna talk that. about that. I want to see more. Well, because of that. because during that one that one uh, uh, direct where they showed off a ton of games uh, a few months ago, um, one of the things that you and I kind of were like, "What the hell?" was like a bunch of DS games. Like yeah. it was more DS games than it was Switch games. So I think that now, yeah. I think that the yeah it's it's gonna be a little bit different this year. I think we're gonna see more. Um, more Switch games than DS games, mm-hmm. um, but if we do see D- if we do see a bunch of DS games, it's going to be because like they're just they're just doubling down on what they showed previously. Right, right. Um, but I really do believe that they're going to be pushing pushing the Switch, because um, as I said, yeah. as I pointed out to. back in like February, they're not trying to sell you a Switch on day one. They're trying to sell you a Switch this year, and. They're going to try to do that again. Yep. Uh, they're going to definitely showcase some games. They have to put it to Switch. They have to. Um, just to kind of reference to last year's um, uh, last year's uh, games that showed off uh, for 2016. 
Uh, the big games were Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, they also talked about uh, 3DS games, Course Party, Dragon Quest VIII, Fragment of the Forgotten Pass, Exile's End, Harvest Moon, Sky Tree Village, Legend of Zelda for Wii U, Monster Hunter Generations, Pokemon Sun and Moon, River City Tokyo Rumble, Shantae Half Genie Hero, Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, Story of Seasons, Trio of Towns, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, um, Yoki, 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 yeah, Yoko Lei, <laughs> and Zero Time and Dilemma. That was about it regarding just games they announced last year at E3. But majority of the time it was Legend of Zelda, uh, a little bit of Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I remember, I remember them talking about um, the uh, Pokemon Go was the other big thing that they were talking, they want to talk about. Oh, they might announce some, uh, I didn't even think about that, they might announce some uh, mobile games. Oh, yeah, I think so too. I remember hearing that they recently, um, they recently licensed a name for, uh, for a mobile game, um, I want to say, I, I want to say it's Warrior, uh, Wear, but I don't think that's it. it was, mm, I it haven't was, heard anything, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it was some mobile game that we're talking about, um, but yeah. I, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see what they do with the mobile market, because, like, unfortunately, Mario Run was not the success that they wanted it to be. No. no. From what, what I, what I read, and, uh. But on that note, um, Fire Emblem Heroes was absolutely a success. Oh yeah, definitely. Which so, is yeah. bizarre as hell to me. <laughs> it's hit or miss. It's, well, actually, I'll, I'll explain that in one word: waifus. Well, I don't think that necessarily is exactly the reason. I think the reason has everything to do with the fact that Fire Emblem Heroes is a lot easier accessible on a mobile device. Actually, no, you're it right. also it also <laughs> didn't cost ten dollars. That's true. <laughs> it, it was it was waifus and the fact that. There's a lot of you who like Fire Emblem, and the fact that there's like four or five emblems a, a year when it comes to that series of Nintendo. <laughs> well, the re you say waifu, and I have to I have to be like, mm, bullshit, uh, is because uh, <laughs> is only because I know people who downloaded and played and played the crap out of the game who didn't know anything about Fire Emblem previously. <laughs> uh, that being said, I I mean the fan art is insane. Yeah. Uh, directly yeah. from the game, so <laughs> you're not entirely wrong, but. Like, I don't think that's the core reason. I think it has everything to do with the $10, like, buy-in. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, as far as other games, like, I more than likely there'll be a bunch of indie games going to be showcased and announced. I know recently uh, Indivisible was announced for the Switch as of late, uh, the game from Lab Zero, or Lab Zero Games is new game they're working on. Um, but there'll be more indie games, probably more on the Switch, because it's becoming more of the device... Uh, home for uh, indie games and developers. Um, outside of that, um, I, yeah, like Mario, I think that we'll, we'll see more of that Pikmin game that they were talking about, that 3DS weird-ass Pikmin 3D game. They're going to push that. They're going to push that pretty hard, I feel like. You, you think so? That game, it's... Well, only because it's a... It is it is their title. Um, it is a Pikmin title, and people have been wanting a Pikmin game for a long time, and it actually looks like a lot of fun, like... I'm going to probably get it in some form, whether I rent it or not. Like, I don't know yet, but um, I don't know. Like, I, I think that uh, they're they're going to have a moment about that. Like, they're going to push it not as hard as other things. Like, they're not going to go, here's the developer of the game, and we're going to have an interview with him. And uh, Miyamoto's going to come out and talk about it for, like, a second. And we're also going to have uh, Resi Fusion me talk. Like, no, they're going to be like, and coming in, like, a month or so, is the new Pikmin game, here's a brief thing on it, and we're going to get, like, a minute to two minute trailer. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really digging into a Pikmin game, but, you know, people will obviously dig because it's Pikmin. Um, my, well, my, my draw to it is it's side scroll. Oh, uh, so. okay. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Um, Normally, I'd be in your camp, I'd be like, meh, whatever. <laughs> right, right. I don't know why I sounded like the penguin there. I was like, man, and, and <laughs> gotta kill the Batman, miss me. <laughs> right, right. Um, outside of that, like I, you know, I think that um, I don't need to be any any other big major announcements of Nintendo. I don't think I don't think so. Unless no, I think I mean I, I would love to see. Well, first off, let me 
what would you like to see them announce? Like something that hasn't even been talked about. Like I'd love to see them do something with Metroid. Uh, yeah, that, that's my first thing, thing too. Is like I would like to see a new Metroid game, a what proper if, new Metroid if? game. What the? What if the next mobile game is a Metroid game? But it's like, it's like. It's gotta be a hard sell. It's gotta be a hard sell. Yeah, like I was th- like, what if it's like pinball? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this. If the if there is a new Metroid game but it's on mobile, I want to have it in the classic NES style side scroller, um, and just another you know great Metroid game in that vein. Um, not to say that Metro Prime was, was awful. Like Metro Prime is freaking awesome. I love it, but it's just you know. After what happened with, with Metroid there at the M, it just kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, not only that, but, like, the uh, the DS game that came out that was based around Metroid Prime. Like, it... it oh, it, man, it, I forgot it, about that. Yeah, that... Something, something Force? I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, that was... Federation Force. Federation Force. Yeah, that was... That was dumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I would like to... I mean, to I, I, I don't, here's the thing. I don't think, I don't think we're getting a mobile... Metroid game. I don't think that's right, gonna happen right. there. Um, I think that for sure, if if we're getting anything Metroid, it'll be it'll be on the Switch. Um, but I also don't I don't think that there's like. I feel like at the big conference they had for the Switch in general. Yeah. Like, we heard about a game coming out in November. Oh, sh- you and... know what? What? Thank you for reminding me that. I don't think it's gonna happen in this direct. Because it kind of it sounded it sounded like he wasn't sure if it's gonna happen or not, but if it does, uh, no more heroes two, or no, yeah, no more heroes uh, two because because no he, he was there, he was there, he was talking about the game and he wants to see Travis touchdown back at it in, in action. So just uh, to clarify, just to clarify, no more heroes three. There is already oh, a two. Sorry, three, three. Sorry, <laughs> I totally forgot. Um, <laughs> I was, yeah. like, I was like, I said three like three times, and you kept saying two. I was like, you didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, that may end up being something. At it. I doubt it, but it would be really cool if it uh, did happen. You know, it's it's not. I mean, look, the game would be exclusive, so it would be. I can't imagine why they wouldn't talk about it if it's like close to. Well, they weren't even close to being done. Like they were just kind of like, maybe here's Suda Fifty One being wacky. Again. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I I. I I doubt they'll do. I doubt it. I really do. But, but, I do like the idea that it's a possibility. I think that's fun. So, I'm gonna throw one out there because they had a history uh, on the Wii U for a brief period. But, wild prediction out there. Tekken Seven on the Switch. Oh, sh- for sure. I see that as a huge possibility. Um, that to me is a no-brainer. That's, I mean, I think fighting games on the Switch are like a, duh, should you be doing that already? Because, well, they're mobile. Well. Uh, having well, that kind of, what, 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 what? I would say it, it'll be it'll be fine as long as there's, a, first of all, I'll be fine if it, if there's a way to where we'll have Nintendo Switch um, compatible uh, sticks or other controllers that can connect to it. Because just currently with the with the current setup with the, with the Switch, with the controller, we had to put you had to turn to the side and play with that tiny little thing. That just that is no way to play a fighting game. Um, it's it's very it's very cumbersome. Not to mention if a person's thumbs are at least, you know, my thumbs are not you know the biggest uh, thumbs in the world, but I can imagine somebody with big hands having very hard I, trying to find. That's fine. I'm that. not disagreeing with you per se. But you're also talking for a community that plays fighting games competitively. That's true. I'm talking yeah. about a community that plays fighting games very casually. Yeah. And it's a no-brainer to me to make games that you could play locally and have it be mobile. But like have it as high quality as what we already know. Um, like, don't get me wrong. The majority of Tekken players are going to be on PlayStation. Oh, like, or PC. Duh. Yeah, they're going to be on there for sure. But, it'd be, uh, but it'd be cool to see on, on the Switch, though. Yeah, I mean, imagine going to Evo, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody's like... And I would love to see also, like... I would love to see the Switch out Fight 6. That'd be rad. But um, imagine going to Evo and, uh, like, some, like, you're just like, man, I'd love to play a fighting game. And you walk around the corner and a bunch of dudes are playing it on the Switch. Like, that'd be awesome. 
just walk around the corner and be like, yeah, I'll get into this. Like, it's not serious. And I'm just kind of bored walking around Evo at the moment. There's not a whole lot to do at the, like, or any convention for that matter. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, like when they announced that um, uh, Jackbox was coming to the Switch, I was like, Duh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that uh. makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Yeah, it makes yeah. it easier to, to do the you know the mini games rather than uh, looking on your PC. Any any kind of any kind of local game being on the Switch, it to me is like a duh. Yeah, it does. It does. So that's that's another thing I'd love to see them do is like like uh, there's just a lot more co-op or or uh, multiplayer Switch games that are local. Um, I think like having like like Bomberman was perfect. Uh, even though I'm not a terrible at Bomberman. Um. I just that that's that to me is like a that to me is is an obvious thing that I think that they're going to do more of, um, just because it's so it's so obvious. Like if you make you made the mobile device, you made the dang thing mobile, it can leave the house. Like my buddy talks about how he probably played Legend of Zelda Ocar- or no, Ocarina of Time. Jeez, Greg. Good for it. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> right, right. Breath of the Wild more in like waiting for his kids in his car than he did at home. Um so hey Nintendo, take right, note. Right, definitely. Start doing that. Yeah. Start making like couch co op type of games on the Switch. Like I cannot stress that enough. Cause that would be do. I'm not quite sure if it would actually help them out because couch co-op games, while there are definitely some great ones out there, it's not as, um, it is not as widely sold as other. Uh, but imagine games. this, Anthony. Imagine, imagine this. The Switch, being the mobile device that it is, goes, "Hey, you can take this with you. You don't have to play this online. You just have to have, if you have four Switch controllers or just four controllers in general, and you prop the dang old thing up." Maybe even plug it in while you're propping it up, which I think the where the plug in is, whatever. Um, you could play with your friends if you're not at home. Like start start selling the damn thing like that. Like right now, the games that they have for it, like um, one, one Arm- two switch. <laughs> well, I was gonna say the, the the big games, I should say. Uh, Breath of the Wild um, wasn't necessarily like. Hey, this is a mobile game. Like it was, it seemed like a sit on the couch and play for hours kind of game, which it, was, it totally was. Like most people probably played it that way. Not to mention it was the only game really people were playing at the time because there really wasn't any other game for Switch. It's true. But I mean, look at what's coming out. Look what they have promoting. Like, I can't imagine a whole lot of people playing Arms and um, and uh, Splatoon Two mobily. I can't. I can't see it. I just. Agreed. Agreed. Like, at best, at best, like, it's like the Wii U situation where someone's like, hey, I want to watch TV right now. And you're just like, okay, let's we'll switch, to, switch to the tablet. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. And I just don't see that being an issue. Um, I will say that I do, like, I do think that Nintendo is starting to climb their way back up after, like, the GameCube was probably their best system and well well if we're talking about sales wise it would be the Wii but well not necessarily the the GameCube was a steady seller the Wii was a like it was like it went up real high but it came down just as fast yeah um because if you remember shortly after you know doing the Wii U they lost 500 million dollars I don't I blame yeah. that on the Wii U at all. I blame that on the Wii. I blame that on how like how it sold and, and the fact that like at work ten years ago they would come up to me and be like, Hey, Nintendo wants you to start selling games and not just uh, the systems. It's like okay, I'll do my best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it like but but the GameCube was the last console I can think of that sold that sold steadily. That yeah. Yeah. did completely F over Nintendo. And to me the Switch is reminiscent of that. Like it's got a great Mario game coming out. It it need, it just needs more content. It needs yep. more things. Yep. A Smash yep. Brothers on the damn thing needs to happen. That is what everybody has been asking for. Is a you know what's funny actually? 
speaking of which, I just watched the Did You Know Gaming about Smash Brothers. Apparently, uh, there was like, it was a Dick Sakurai came up to, uh, uh, what's the creator's name of a Smash? Um, Oh wait, it was Sakurai. Yeah, Sakurai. I was like, I was like, I think you just oh, said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, but um, okay. Uh, I think they're both named Sakurai, actually. Uh, anyways, they came to Sakurai and saying like, "Hey, um, we want a Smash Brothers on the Wii." Um, and if they're, if he didn't agree to it, they were gonna port a HD version of Melee to Wii. With online functionality, uh, online uh, pl uh, com uh, play, and that was it. In, in a way, in a weird way, Sakurai was the very reason why there was no uh, melee HD, <laughs> and people have been wanting this for a very long time. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of hate developers like Sakurai, who are so passionate about their their thing that they're like, well, no one else could touch it. I'll be mad if anyone else touches it. Her rump. It's like no. Sign that contract that says you get royalties every time they make the game. Yeah. And live the rest of your life in comfort. Yeah. Like, that's, quit being stupid. Yeah, it's... I would love to see a Melee HD on the Switch, but it, it's not going to happen. No, I want to see... I, I mean, I either want to see um, a, a port of, of the Wii U one, or... Um, Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. I think, or, I think or a new it, switch or a new a new a new Smash. I think I think that we'll get I think if we'll get a port of any Smash game, it'll be it'll be the, the Wii U version. I think we'll get a port of it on the Switch. The Wii U version's great. Like I think like I understand why people didn't like the uh, the the uh, brawl. Yeah, brawl. Thank you. I was like the Wii one. What the hell was it called? Um, <laughs> because of the trip mechanic. Like yeah, yeah. More fun, less competitive. Um, but mm -hmm. the newest one's more competitive than whatever but mm -hmm. um yeah i just i think that like again that's why i said smash just because in my mind they the damn commercial for the thing showed people like setting it up at a party and then having fun with it and doing rad things and you mean you mean you mean the one where they go on people people's uh, rooftops and play uh nintendo games yeah, because they were selling it like that. They were selling it to be that party device. They were selling it to be that, hey, take it to a friend's house and prop it up with the, you know, the backstand and pull out the controllers and start playing mobile ge like uh, or competitive or competitive or co-op games with with your friends around. And I think that they need to start selling it like that. They should need to start making more games that cater to that marketing gimmick or the system's not going to do as well as they hope well, i mean it's already doing well but yeah it's already doing well i think that they just need more they need more games they just all it's all original games oh well, well, I'll, I'll take I, that back just games in general <laughs> yeah I've, because... I've said that i've said that on this podcast a hundred times like a system's only as good as its games and right now switch doesn't have a whole lot of games yeah and that's so. We'll, we'll definitely see. I think that they'll coming out in full force um, at this E3. I will say, just to kind of end it, I will say that um, we'll probably see another Kirby game because this is the year of Kirby for them. Like <laughs> It's like the 25th anniversary, I want to say, of Kirby for this year for Nintendo. So, Which, hey, I love Kirby games because they're always pop, they're always good for the most time, or for the most part. But um, They're always insanely easy for me. Like, I blaze through a Kirby game like it's nothing. Yeah, definitely. Um... But yeah, in due time, we'll, we'll find out what happens at this year's E3. So, there you go, guys. All our predictions for E3 for the three major press conferences. Obviously, there are other press conferences happening, um, as we said in the beginning of the show. Um, so, what we will do, um, and I'm, I'll am i make it a point to have it done by before the end of this week. But I'm going to make some... Um, I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to make, my, I'm gonna make uh, bingo cards for E3. Uh, for each press conference, so Nintendo, Sony, um, and uh, Microsoft. I'll do. I'll just do the major three. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll set bingo cards and we'll just have some fun and see what happens to see if we're, we're correct. I'm not sure if there's any like incentive at the end of it. Like, uh, I, I was gonna. Say, I was gonna say like, what? Why don't we make this interesting and do something with it, like um, a bet of some kind? I don't know if you want to do it monetary or punishment wise. Um, I think for the sake of entertainment, let's do punishment-wise. Um, 
as far as like what that is, I I think hot peppers are played out, so we'll move on from that. Yeah, <laughs> I think we yeah maybe uh, use that uh, a bit. Oh, you um, know what we could do we could, whatever punishment it is, we'll have to do during um uh, extra life. Yeah, yeah, we can we make make it happen. Yeah. But that's another another thing I gotta talk to you about with extra life, but uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, yeah. it's it's just basically scheduling it. Uh, the not the same weekend as as half empty <laughs> oh yeah was it the same weekend as half empty last time no 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 half empty did do one last time but i don't uh, want like i know that you plan on doing one this year again probably another 24 hour one since the one we did was successful and um and i know that half empty wants to do one as well so uh, um, you know you know if we, if we want we can we can conjoin the two being cross streams forces. Like we can like have like hey we're doing our 24 hours and then half empty does it right afterwards. It's like hey we're tossing the baton to the next person. I say. I will say no to that for one reason. <laughs> doing doing the 24 hours on a Saturday is a lot more lucrative than doing it on a Sunday. But but we also need to not do it on the same damn weekend. That like rooster teeth and everybody else is doing theirs. Yeah, that's true. Lessons were learned. Uh, <laughs> lessons were, were learned a, a lot. <laughs> that that that. We had like what, twenty people, and then suddenly seven hundred. Like that was cool. Where I have I flipped my crap. That was insane. <laughs> I was like, why? How many? Not to mention like when you were asleep. Like, and I was playing Mario Maker around, like, 5 in the morning. There was, like, 500 people watching me. I was like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I you got to imagine at least, like, half of those are bots. But that's still 250, like, fresh eyes watching you. Like, what is happening? I know. It was crazy. It's, it's like, it has to be, like, from also overseas or somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, well, you were also at a weird time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that as it comes closer because it's, it's a, quite a bit off. But oh, I will yeah. say this. I will say this. I don't know what we have planned or what you your idea for this year's, but um, mission star or, uh, but half empty uh, as a little bit of a uh, note to you guys. I don't think it's necessarily a secret, um, but we have a special theme for ours. Oh, oh, Disney games. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So are we gonna see the uh, the hardest Disney game to be played that weekend? Oh, uh, what was the, what would that be? Lion King. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Brittany is actually, like, really, really good at that game, oddly oh, enough. Really? She just has she has a really hard time on the last level, but for the rest of the game, she's actually pretty pretty proficient at it. Nice. Um, the one thing that I'm actually, I'm hoping pulls through, don't know if it is, but there's possibly a, um, a an Aladdin race, but not, Ooh. but not, not on one system. It's Genesis versus uh, uh, SNES. Ooh. Which like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that happens because as of right now, I don't know if it is, but it's all in talks. So that's cool. But yeah, but yeah, we're definitely doing a Disney theme, and um, I don't think I'm necessarily. I think it's okay to talk about right now. I mean, we're gonna do it, but with, nothing's been announced. So yeah, that'd be so. pretty sick. That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, but that's gonna do it for our podcast. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we are now back on the schedule. Um, next week, I don't think we'll have a podcast no we won't because um or maybe we might actually ha able to um, we will but we won't be live yeah yeah so keep a lookout guys if anything we'll, we'll be watching e3 with the rest of you um again starting this saturday is going to be the start of it uh e3 is here guys it's it's that time of year again um before we go greg where can i find you on the internet uh you can find me on uh, twitter uh instagram and facebook by searching shop rock geek um, I'm more active on, uh, Twitter than I am anything else. Uh, but that's where you'll see like upcoming streams, um, or just articles or whatever that I'm doing that are going up on the website. Um, but also every Saturday I stream on half empty energy tank, which that's twitch.tv slash half empty E tank. Um, and this, this weekend, like this Friday I'll be playing, I'll be streaming cause I'm covering for the Friday guy, but I'm also streaming Saturday and uh, I'm going to try to play um, speedrunners with my nephews, which if you've ever played speedrunners, a oh, game, yeah. it's basically side scroller Mario Kart and um, hilarious and fun. And you yell at your friends and it's a good time. So hopefully I can irritate my nephews enough to yell and it'll be funny. Awesome. Awesome. 
Uh, you can follow me personally on Twitter at Defect of Naruto. You can follow the work that we do at MissionStarPodcast.com. Speaking of which, if you enjoy this, this Twitch stream, uh, we are live normally around 8, 8 p.m. Uh, on every Sunday night on this Twitch channel. So if you haven't read it, please hit that follow button. Also, I should check if we got new follows, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, we are live every Sunday night with uh, Mission Star Podcast, our weekly video game podcast on this Twitch channel. If you cannot watch the entire stream or uh, unable to catch the stream live, uh, we also have an audio version on iTunes and Stitcher, um, which we upload every Tuesday. Um, so definitely keep on the lookout for that and subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. Uh, if you enjoy us talking about conventions that we attend, uh, whether it be anime, gaming, you know, furry conventions, whatever it may be, check out the Conover, which is uh, on also on iTunes and Stitcher, um, as well as on YouTube. Uh, we're going to have uh, we just recorded one today actually, so expect a new episode this Friday. Uh, our talks about Fanime uh, is going to be up, so definitely check it out on iTunes and Stitcher when it goes live. Last but not least, check out the Rolling Twenties, hosted by Jeremy Olson. Uh, we're talking about comic books, movies, video games, anime, a bit of everything in one big podcast, uh, hosted by Jeremy Wilson, uh, which is also on iTunes, Stitcher, and on YouTube. And I'm happy to report that I am three-fourths of the way getting the movie podcast up. I said RSS feed uh, today. I put the episodes in. I just got to make the art for it and submit it to iTunes, and we have our podcast up for... Down in front, our movie podcast. Uh, speaking of which, um, the next one we are doing, we're gonna not sure when exactly. I know that um, one of us already saw it already, but um, uh, Wonder Woman is a movie yeah. that we're gonna talk about. And uh, when it does happen, we'll be streaming that live on our Facebook uh, at facebookcom Mission Star Podcast, and we uh, upload it on YouTube on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can find below this video. Um, and then uh, again, I am uh, 34 percent away of getting the actual RSS feed up. So that we can finally have the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to uh, to our thoughts and whatnot about the newest movie we've seen. So that's pretty much about it. So with that being said, thank you guys. It's great to be back and streaming again, and we'll see you guys next time.